Welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at a video sent to me on the subject of Antifa. So this should be fun. You've probably heard a lot of this word lately. Radical, leftist, Antifa thugs. I'm gonna botch how it's pronounced. Antifa? 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 Uh, yeah, Antifa. Antifa, short for anti-fascist. It's an umbrella term for a group that shows up at protests to confront neo-Nazis and white supremacists. And in quite a number of instances, they get quite violent, physically violent, in a way that is almost fascist in nature. And let's face it, nothing screams tolerance more than drilling a point home with a baseball bat, bike chain, mace, or whatever else you can find to attack those poor defenseless bins. They dress in all black, they wear masks, and they occasionally engage in violence. You know, I find it somewhat amusing that people who are so desperate for everyone else to do as they damn well tell them feel the need to attack everyone physically behind a mask. In this instance, and I know people are going to point out the obvious with an avatar, but I don't preach violence just to get that point out. Isn't it odd that you don't stand behind your convictions enough to attack those that don't wear masks the same way, without your masks? Then again, most people know who you are anyway, because you're communists. You'll stand out. You'll be the ones wearing the socialist t-shirts, unironically. Once again, Antifa members attack peaceful demonstrators. The group's tactics and appearance have garnered them a lot of media attention over the past few months. America is waking up to the menace of Antifa. They're known as Antifa, and they're also known for being violent. I had for a while wondered how long it would be before Antifa, that left-wing anarchist group, were declared domestic terrorists. Now, there were rumors of some confidential documents that had indicated they have been labeled domestic terrorists. And certainly in 2016, with quite a number of protests, violent ones with right-wing nationalists, which is the safest way to call the others that they were attacked. Let's just not call them Nazi, for God's sake. I'm sick of watering that word down. Yeah, let's move on. But for a group that's getting so much airtime for being violent and dangerous, they're not causing that much havoc. In Berkeley, where about 4,000 people showed up to protest a white supremacist rally, there were 100 Antifa, 9 injuries, and a total of 13 arrests. Ah, Berkeley. That super progressive and tolerant place that brought us such protests as let's freak the fuck out because Milo is coming to talk. And this one, as far as I'm aware, it was actually 21 arrests. And I believe the event organizer Patriot Prayer tried to try and have an argument with Scott Wiener. Yeah, Wiener, actual name. <clears throat> and he tried to move it to a public park where he would have been arrested because some of the members of this protest were armed illegally. Now, as far as the protest itself goes, I feel like you're downplaying this. Any arrests, any injuries are not acceptable. If it was truly a peaceful one, there would have been none. And I think that needs to be understood here. Let these people who want to be their, what you call, white supremacists, because they're going to die off, much like you, much like all of you, 2020 everyone. And I am not trying now to be some kind of right-wing apologist. My position on this is quite clear. If people have stupid ideas in their head and they want to protest based on race, honestly, do it. If you're legally doing it, even better, because then we can see you and mock you for who you are, which is racist. You are no better than them if you then go and attack them violently, as if you're going to change their mind. All you do is make them look better than you. I don't understand how people like you don't get this into your heads. And not you, the person doing this video. I mean the people who commit the violent acts on the idiots. In Boston, where 40,000 protesters showed up, no major injuries, 33 arrests. In Portland, thousands of protesters at opposing rallies, no major injuries, 14 arrests. Now, while you're trying to make what you think to be a salient point, I think you have entirely missed it, or mucked it up, whichever you prefer, really, because you've chosen the three tamest instances of Antifa tolerance. A very quick Google search reveals far more heinous incidents and many bins suffering at the hands of these communists. That might sound like a lot, but it's about the number of arrests you'd expect at a rowdy NFL game. Antifa look scary, but they make up a tiny part of the protests they show up at. And yet, while they are protesting, literally every single other person who has a political leaning that isn't communist, I mean socialist, they still manage to cause a mountain of damage not just to people, but to public and private property. People mostly, though. I mean, how cowardly are you if you're wearing a mask and you smack someone on the head with a bike chain? How cowardly are you if you're wearing a mask and you go up around someone and smack them in the face or spray them with mace? Stand in front of them, then do it. 
you ridiculously privileged upper middle class oiks. So why have they become such a powerful boogeyman in protest coverage? What is Antifa? What is Antifa? What is Antifa? To understand why the media focuses on outliers like Antifa, I talked to Doug McLeod. He's been studying the way the media covers protest movements for... Basically 30 years. Anti-war movements, anti-pornography movement, various civil rights movements, anarchist protests, abortion protests. Okay, don't brag. You're already in the video. Is it not interesting that while people are curious as to what Antifa are, They've already pigeonholed every group that Antifa are protesting. They're either all white supremacists, or they're all white nationalists, or they're all Trump supporters, so racists. The specific panic about Antifa might seem new, but McLeod says it's part of a much older media problem. Is the media problem that over the years, media trust has plummeted? So most people and their bullshit armatures are noticing that the journalists are not being very honest or unbiased and they can see right through it. In fact, when they pick up their newspaper, they can just sniff the turd, sniff it, and know that what they're about to read is complete and utter crap. Media coverage tends to gravitate towards dramatic video. So things like violence is prominently featured. The more radical looking members of a protest attract the attention of the news media cameras. I don't want to be that guy that plays Captain Obvious, but honestly, everyone knows violence and sex sells. Absolutely sells 100%. People want to see violence so they can judge it. Eh, judge. You can see the media's fixation on radical protesters in coverage of a lot of big protests. Probably because they know that their core audience is dwindling because of their dishonesty, so the only way they can try and retain viewers or readers is by looking for the most violent, the most tensely charged moments or encounters, because there are only so many times they can focus on a kitten with two heads. That's not a joke. That actually was in the news recently. During the 1999 WTO protests in Seattle, cameras focused on anarchists destroying property. A group we now know as anarchists called the Black Bloc began terrorizing the city. With Black Lives Matter in Baltimore, peaceful protests against police brutality were overshadowed by images of violence and property damage. Rioting has broken out in the streets. During Occupy Wall Street, reporters focused on protesters who looked weird or destroyed property. Anarchists sprang out of the crowd and launched this full-on assault. You cannot see public space to thugs and lawbreakers, lawlessness, violence, filth. Absolutely fantastic. You focused on anarchists, which is basically what Antifa are. Let's face it. I mean, communists, socialists, whatever, really. I want to read something that Obama said after that particular incident in Baltimore. There's no excuse for the kind of violence that we saw yesterday. It is counterproductive. When individuals get crowbars and start prying open doors to loot, they're not protesting. They're not making a statement, they're stealing. When they burn down a building, they're committing arson, and they're destroying and undermining businesses and opportunities in their own communities. That robs jobs and opportunity from in that area, which is interesting because it's been noticed a lot of these people are traveling cross state lines to protest. So you're just damaging someone else's home. And while it is a shame the peaceful protest got overshadowed, thankfully it wasn't ignored. None of these instances were ignored. Yes, the media was being a bit disingenuous, but they knew, but they are very much part of a capitalist society, so they know how to play the game, which does suck, because it means they lose their integrity to not report honestly. Now it's Antifa. Now the peaceful counter-protest against racism turned violent. The result is a type of outlier bias, where a small group of violent protesters ends up dominating news coverage. You saw it in Berkeley. By any measurement, nine injuries in a protest of 4,000 people is an outlier. But headlines fixated on Antifa violence instead of the vast majority of protesters. Berkeley's mayor says it is time to confront the violent extremism on the left. You don't suppose this has anything to do with the fact that the extreme left's willingness to use violence to drill a point home is somehow unacceptable, unnecessary, wrong. I never quite understood the appeal to resulting to violence to make your point. It doesn't make it valid. And while the numbers of people being arrested are outliers, Antifa are doing a lot of damage, and they are the ones in quite a number of instances to actually swing first, and then try and blend back in with the rest of their masked mobs. 
because they don't want to be caught on their own. They're like a gazelle or a gaping cunt. A lot of this is about ratings. Images of violence and property damage create a spectacle, which makes them really hard to look away from. What's more interesting to watch? A bunch of smiling protesters banging on drums or Antifa fighting Nazis? Okay, two things. Firstly, I'm glad you finally got to the point about ratings. Congratulations, it only took you a few minutes. Second, Antifa aren't fighting Nazis, Nazis don't exist anymore, okay? Neo-Nazis, yes. White nationalists, yes. White nationalist isn't necessarily a Nazi. Do you understand this? I'm not now, and I keep having this right-wing apologist comment that was left to me on a recent video about Owen Jones and popping up in my head, it's triggering me. Honestly, using the word Nazi devalues what the Nazis actually did. You're debasing history. You're insulting it. You're insulting those that fought for your freedom. You're insulting those that died for your freedom. They fought Nazis. Antifa are fighting idiots. Fighting what they deem to be fascism with fascism. Yeah, agreed. But for a lot of reporters, it's also about convenience. Protests are kind of a nightmare to cover. They're leaderless, disorganized, and often focus on big issues that are hard to reduce to quick sound bites. A lot of journalists are really trying to get a story straight and they're trying to get it out there, but they're operating under a lot of constraints. You gotta find something, you gotta get back, and you gotta tell it quickly. Those time constraints mean a lot of journalists rely on official sources for quick summaries of what happened. Which is another of many reasons why journalists are not trust because the information they provide can and has often been debunked. Now this video goes on for another three minutes, talking about journalists and their motivations, why they don't cover certain peaceful elements and instead focus on clashes, the violence. We're talking about we're talking about communists clashing with anyone they disagree with and willing to use violence because of it, and journalists using capitalism to perfection. It's not rocket science. And Vox, you're doing a very good job at downplaying, and you do throughout this entire video, of downplaying Antifa by selecting a very few instances where Antifa were not as vicious. The list of what they've actually done is much worse, and it's shocking that you'd be so intellectually dishonest about it. Thank you all for listening.